Thanks for checking out GuardiansOfTheGreenBray.com. Today we present Richard Colvert. He was sent to us about a year ago and somehow got put off to the side. Uh, he claims Green Beret in Vietnam and 54 combat jumps. That's correct, 54 combat jumps. Turns out he was a cook and a file clerk that never set foot in Vietnam. But Watch the video, and then you could see the data we have on them at our website, guardiansofthegreenbray.com. Thanks. I was born in 1950, grew up mostly in Sacramento, California. I knew that I would be drafted uh, sooner or later. So I chose to enlist so I could get a, uh, a position that I wanted. No, no, no. I graduated uh, in 1966 and uh, I was 16. Three days after I was 17, I uh, decided I was going to join the military. My parents wouldn't sign for me, and uh, I went over to the Army, and my brother-in-law uh, signed for me to enlist. When I went to the uh, recruiting office, I knew that I wanted to be a combat medic, and the reason for that was my uncle, my dad's brother, was a combat medic in World War II. He was uh, a uh, Merle Marauder. I was sent to Fort Lewis, Washington, and through basic training, and uh, they sent me to uh, Fort Sam Houston. The first week I started uh, schooling to be a combat medic. Then after um, I applied for jump school, and went to Fort Campbell and went through with the 101st Airborne. And one of the things that I wanted to really try to get into was Special Forces. And so after Fort Campbell, I went to uh, Fort Bragg for Special Forces. After that there, I went to, back to Fort Benning to jump on the 250-foot towers and uh, got my master jump classification. I went through uh, from April to the end of June in 1967, the training for jump school and special forces, and was getting ready to uh, go back to Fort Sam for GOAT school, which was a special school for combat medics. I applied for Vietnam. I volunteered. So I landed in uh, Vietnam on December of 1967. When I got there, I was waiting uh, to be attached to some company. So I worked at the hospital in Saigon, the 44th uh, Medical Battalion Hospital, and was there for about three to four weeks, about a month. And then they sent me to the 9th Infantry Division. With the 9th, I was down at the Macon Delta, which is three core, and I was there pretty close to almost 13 months. At the Macon Delta, I uh, cut my leg. I had to go to the field hospital, and uh, they sewed my leg up, and I was almost at the end of my tour, so before they sent me back, I re-enlisted and was transferred to a different unit. On my re-enlistment, I was attached to the 498th Air Ambulance dust-off, and I was with them for about three months. Um, I decided to, I had a chance to transfer, so I transferred to an armor division, and uh, we was at Hill 29, called uh, Hawk Hill. There's only one person that I got attached to, a black gentleman. Uh, his name was Theodore Wilson, and uh, 
Late 68, he got his legs blown off, and uh, I made up my mind then that I would never, ever get close to people again because it was too hard. At Hill 29, um, I have a picture of me and him helping a, another injured uh, vet back to the med station. And that's where I got injured. A piece of uh, rocket flak or scrap metal hit me through my left hand and uh, I was back out in a week there at Hill 29 and got hit in the right hand. So I was transferred, I, I had been with the 101st Airborne and this was the 506 and this was uh, 1969, probably a, somewhere in the middle of April, we started up on Hill 937, which was Hamburger Hill. By the, I think about the 7th or the 8th, we had some heavy rocket fire coming in, and by the 10th of May, it really got furious. We'd have to, we couldn't get the men that was injured, we'd have to hand carry them. We couldn't get a, a medevac ship in to get them off the, the mountain. In between the 10th and the 20th, we had a lot of casualties. I think through that 10-day uh, period, we had over 75 killed, a couple hundred, maybe three, 400 injured. There's a picture that a, uh, photographer, combat uh, photographer. I don't know why he took a picture of me. The guy had a uh, chest injury. I was uh, giving him a uh, normal saline solution to wait to get him down off the mountain. And you cannot think about your safety. You think about that individual. That's the oath that you give, that you will do what you have to do to bring that person home. Hamburg Hill was the turning point of the Vietnam War to the American people. We fought there for 10 days and then just to walk off that hill and give it back was something that most of us guys didn't understand. If I had to do it over again, I'd do the same thing. Uh, I enjoyed being a combat medic. So after Hamburg Hill, I was uh, transferred and attached to the 15th Medical Battalion in 1970 and was honored to work with a couple of five-man alert teams. Um, we would jump into the north with the 1st Airborne Division of South Vietnam. Early of 71, we did a jump and I was doing something that I wasn't supposed to do. It was a point man as a combat medic in a five-man team. And lo and behold, uh, I had received three rounds through the right side. It blew out my appendix, uh, my spleen. Took a probably an eighth of an inch of my lung, um, broke one of my ribs, and Lucky, which is an AK-47, hardly ever jams. But after three rounds, it jammed. And one of the other, we called him Snots, he killed the, the individual. And uh, they extracted me out. And I went to a field hospital. And as they sent me back to Saigon, I was there between four to five, maybe six months. And uh, I had went out on one more mission after that there, and I got a carrier came out and um, told me that the commanding officer of the unit wanted to see me. And so I was in big trouble. Uh, I had not wrote my mom and dad for three and a half years almost. And uh, they don't want to be getting uh, letters from the congressman or from the Red Cross. And my mom got a hold of the Red Cross, and the Red Cross got a hold of the military. The military 
it goes on downhill. So every day for 14 days, I had to write a letter to my mom and apologize. And uh, that was the end of my tour in Vietnam. In 1971, I was back into the United States and uh, I was uh, shipped over to uh, Brook General and I worked in a burn ward there at Fort Sam in San Antonio, Texas for about three to four months and then got orders to go to Fort Dix, New Jersey. And there was an opening to go to uh, Germany. So I got transferred to Dolan Barracks in Swabish Hall, Germany. After about five years in, at Dolan Barracks, they was gonna send me back to um, Fort Dix. So I got out and went into the reserves and I stayed in the reserves until uh, 1983. As most veterans come back and get married, they bring back memories of the war, your nightmares or your flashbacks. I was married two other times, and uh, my second wife, I have three girls from her, and I'm blessed to have eight grandchildren. Luckily, my wife now understands a lot because her dad was a prisoner of war in Stalag Luft III and this marriage has been uh, a gift from heaven, you know. And I have a wonderful relationship with my kids. Nowadays, I work a lot in my garage. I love working on uh, my car in the garage. It's peaceful, I don't drink, I don't smoke. So it's a, uh, a passion for me. Being raised in a uh, Christian home, I know that he has a purpose for each individual. And I never worry about a job. I never worry about finances. I know that uh, the guy upstairs is gonna take care of me because he brought me through uh, three and a half years of Vietnam. One thing about the Vietnam War is I just figured that uh, everybody needed to be free no matter what. And uh, I have bronze stars and I have silver stars. I had uh, purple hearts. Uh, I just feel that they're not important. Uh, the people that we left there. Uh, that's the most important thing, because their parents, their relatives, is never gonna see them again. All they have is the memory. See the rest of the data on this case and all our other work at guardiansofthegreenbray.com.